Hello. Good afternoon. Wednesday the 23rd of March 2022. And welcome back to those of you that saw part one. Of certified person, legal personality, straw man, fiction name, doing business as, and security instrument. I'll just um, like to post this on the uh, SPLS Pro domain and on our uh, Facebook and then we shall begin I have 60 odd pages <laughs> to go through still so uh, it's gonna be a long one I will direct you to where part one is if you are watching this and you haven't seen part one then it will be my pleasure to tell you where that is okay just let me log into the uh, the Facebook SPLS Pro FB post this into telegram as well both of our chat groups I think I've spelled all of that correct Yes, yes, yes. Bravo. Public chirp, private chirp. Okay. All is looking well. I will do some screen shares to let you know what's going on. Okay, all right, got it. Share screen. Here we go. So, here is uh, SPLS Pro, my backup channel account on YouTube. And if we click videos. You will see here certified person legal personality straw man streamed six day days ago. Just like that. All right, that's where you'll find it. Just like to check the audio. Bella Bella. I'll show you if you haven't seen and you're not aware of my other channel, the main channel, I N D I G L O W. Enter. You would click there and look for the uh, bearded king with the fist icon. Bosh. And there is Indiglo, my main channel, of some years now. So you will uh, may if you choose whichever you want. There is quite a lot of playlists there. Across the years of chat with myself, Kevin, admins, my own presentations. Okay, so that's uh, the introductions. Let me go to um, home. This is where you can find me in the private splspro.com, as is in the the back there. And I do believe we are ready to begin. Stop screen sharing. Released in the streets. Still got love for the streets, fam. Right, so without further ado. We're ready to go. So after you've watched part one two hours and something you would need to come back and pick up 
where I am now, which is page 41 of 90. And in that two and a half hours thereabouts of part one, I've extensively, intricately, concisely <laughs> explained the, uh, the video title today of which uh, you are present with me on now. Certified person, um, legal personality, straw man, fiction name, doing business as, and security instrument. Or more or less, I'm, uh, I'm now around about halfway through, so I shall take a quick wet of the whistle. Apple juice, not beer, eh? And we continue on. Welcome and thank you. Much love. Are you ready for a big one? If not, pause it and come back when your uh, saturation point is a little bit larger. You references a person that's owned by Crown UK and US other, and other governments. There no longer exists any form of representative government under the framework that is the United Nations Charter. The UN platform is offered as a contract and is then enforced via the Bilderberg Steering Committee's influence upon all signatory governments. Today what presents itself as your council or government, or more correctly, the men and women working within the same, they are deceiving and somewhat defrauding authentic sovereign womb woe man. They pretend they represent man and operate according to the parameters of the office they hold after you give them your vote to hold that office. So wards of the state, wardens, offices, uh, directorate of the governments, uh, executives, principals, ministers, different land masses and jurisdictions, different titles and offices. What we know as and call government today is in fact an incorporated entity. That means that because they are corporations, they can no longer represent an authentic, autonomous, living womb man woman woman due to the fact the council government has changed jurisdiction they have shifted from a realm of laws to a realm of roman secular commercial legislation controlled by unidroit maritime admiralty ucc and for the movement of maritime fleet cargo coming under admiralty maritime and shipping then we have the Universal Postal Union and various other secular codes. You only need to look at the American codified constitution. And this they call the legal system, commercial intercourse. However, they enthusiastically keep up an act in which they work very hard to convince man that they represent you while knowing con the contrary to be fact. And again, you will find in part one, detailed analysis, um, explanation and citations of, you know, uh, the subject matter at hand of which I'm referring to now. That can make them devils and liars from the minute they join the council government, deceiving the devil is in the details, uh, the language that they speak, the positions and, uh, you know, the we the people, we are not people or persons. I hope you will uh, be grasping that now. And um, we, man, are present here today. The government is a very large corporation composed of offices and wards of the state. Ward ends are mainly, but not exclusively, found in prisons, prison wardens. You also need to look at Admiralty in Maritime and uh, the captain, you know, the skipper. You know, attention on deck, all rise. Does that sound familiar anywhere? You might have heard, all rise. Captain has an office, and officers of, are of the office, off ice. We look at the pirates, the boats. Old pirates, yes, they rob I. We look at the pirate flag, the skull and bones. We reference uh, the young girl who was a student that uh, proved that all the American, a majority, a gross majority of all the American presidents are, can be found to be related. We are aware of the disclosure of the Skull and Bones Fraternity. I believe it's 322. 
you know so the position is in controversy and any and all organizations of men or women that cover up this fact are also in controversy including the judiciary courts judgment ships the judiciary are complicit in the deception and non-disclosure if one asks for full disclosure in a court or judiciary you know as it relates to the use of dog latin today called english you know american sign language they run out of court or the battlefield sometimes often yes they do we reference the oxford and chicago manual of styles styles manuals which I have some publications there oh I see my uh, green uh, screen <laughs> there's only a little bit of limitation let me just turn off the, uh, the settings hither as you know I don't want to I'm not in an ideal situation <laughs> but still We'll turn off the uh, the background filters for a moment. None. Ooh. No Oxford style manual. References within there. The Chicago. Okay. There you go. Manual of style. Edition 16. I've also got a 14 one there. Look at me background. Looks like I'm sat on a boat myself, doesn't it? All uh, topsy turvy. <laughs> there we go. Let's get back on. Why do they run out of court and leave the battlefield? Well, they may do that because of the fact, you know, in the paperwork they are using various languages amongst legalese styles and so forth therefore they run out of court for one of two reasons concealment of the facts and or the right to silence they are very very weak and uh, somewhat evil this uh, the members of the uh, law society and also the lower courts as well I'll get on to that later in this document about lower courts and non lawful um, business venues and we've covered this in some of our previous documents extensively as well as in this one again so we look at now the person the types of persons and we will look at um, artificial person in this instance the artificial person you possess called a citizen creating a contractual obligation to follow the laws of man's government over gods the laws of government saturn satan govern only persons, demons, not living men and women. Not dissimilarly, the rules and regulations of commercial employees only regulate the demon person created as and called the employee. Another artificial status of personhood. No man is bound by the rules of any corporation unless they are employed by that corporation, including all of the municipalities and offices of government, the corporation nation, body corporate if you are employed you are possessing an additional legal fictional status added to a person called an employee so legislation is only applicable and, and acts and legislation are only applicable to employees of the government possession the having, holding or detention of property in one's power or command, actual seizing or occupancy, either rightful or wrongful. One man may have the possession of a thing and another may have the right possession, the right of possession or property. In bailment, the bailee who receives goods to convey or to keep for a time has the possession of the goods and a temporary right over them but not the property. A possession can be looked at in um, spiritual realms as well. Um, I'm sure you've all seen Hollywood blockbusters where there are um, demons possessing um, souls. 
Property in possession includes both the right and the occupation. Anything valuable possessed or enjoyed, Christian peace of mind is the best possession of life. The state of being under the power of demons or invisible beings, madness, lunacy, as demonical possession, to take possession, to enter on or to bring within one's power or occupancy, to give possession, to put in another's power or occupancy. Webster's 1828 reference. You may have seen um, films which involve seances where spirits are summoned and um, the courts use language there with regards to summons additionally. Employment. Employment can be looked at as a ploy of Troy. Um, the act of employing or using occupation, business, that which engages, military, engage, the head or hands as agricultural employments, mechanical employments, men whose employment is to make sport and amusement for others are always despised. Office, public business or trust, agency or service for another or for the public. The secretary of the treasury has a laborious and responsible employment. He is in the employment of government. Again from Webster's 1828. To be employed is to be in service as a debtor and taxpayer to government. It is to be employed through mammon using the invisible being described above as demon that the man possesses in person, in name, and is employed, used under the power of that demonic possession. The person employed is a material possession of, say, government in this instance. So when we talk about commercial intercourse, commercial prostitution um, a prostitute would be somebody who makes um, money and a living from the use of their body and using it for the em enjoyment of others when you um, get out of bed un you know forcing yourself to get up and f eat and travel distances to go somewhere to use your body to make money um, money credits income cash flow for yourself and your family you know through the use of your body um, for the benefit of others which um, own companies that then after you've used your body and sweat equity and so forth you know then uh, at the end of the month you would get or the end of the week you will get um, payment for that or credits transferred to a nominated bank account in this day and age so bear that in mind to occupy employed latin to occupy the time, attention and labour of, to keep busy or at work, to use. A portion of time should be daily employed in reading the scriptures, meditation and prayer. A great portion of life is employed to little profit or to very bad purposes. To use as an instrument or means, we employ pens in writing and arithmetic in keeping accounts. We employ medicines in curing diseases. So you see how laterally the word employ can be used and its different implied meanings and definitions here. To use as materials in forming anything, we employ timber, stones or bricks in building. We employ wool, linen, linen and cotton in making cloth. To engage in one service, to use as an agent or substitute in transacting business, to occupy, to use, to apply or to devote to an object, to pass in business, as to employ time, to employ an hour, a day or a week, to employ one's life, to employ oneself, is to apply or devote one's time and attention to busy oneself that which is a, which engages the mind or occupies the time and labor of a person business object of study or industry employment occupation as art mystery trade profession public office agency service for another again webster's 1828 engage to make liable for a debt to a creditor to bind oneself as surety to pawn, to stake as a pledge, to enlist, to bring enlist, hmm, to bring into a party as to engage men for service, to engage friends, to aid in a cause, to unite and bind by contract or promise, 
nations engage themselves to each other by treaty to occupy to employ as a, as a citizen you are employing using and, and occupying in trust the person owned by government and therefore agreeing to its rules codes unwarranted home invasions of the current occupier springs to mind attachment of earnings And I'm reading, obviously this document is a proofread and it is not in exclusive finalised order. So there's a lot of information that may not um, end up in the final draft being in this order. But um, I may jump and flip from here to there. But um, I need to get through these 90 pages and see how it sounds and check for errors and mistakes and look at the flow and then look at the revisions before it, uh, it will be released in our usual places, Facebook splspro.com are two telegram groups we are aware of the instruments of person personage aka legal personality for UK and English agreements you know within churches and courts and the state man has a certified legal person and a natural legal person not so natural as one might think because natural person like sovereign citizen is a, is a little bit of an oxymoron then we have positions and titles such as set law, natural man with his or her two legal persons. We look at uh, Human Rights International Codes, Unidroit, Liber Codes, plus relevant international political and religious accords, covenant and treaties included with the text from the, uh, from the heliocentric bibliotheque included. And one is learning, you are learning, initiates are learning and selecting how to perform. One must not be told how to perform. One is assumed and presumed to be a name with a date of birth, a national insurance number and a legal person, a Mr, a Ms, a Mrs. And with that public title, a member of the general public. Performance is required though to settle controversy. Performances are played by actors with titles and remember the whole world is a stage. Armies are judged upon their performance and reality is but an illusion within this divine comedy of life. So we, you, the initiates of our um, public and private trusts are learning to move consciously from public legal trustee and adjust the following to move back to the tree, the tree of life as a branch that's why i spell you as in y e w as in the tree of life there is e w e for lambs there is y e w for tree there is y o u and then there is the letter u so we're moving back to the tree the tree of life as a branch and ending all civil activities safely under the naked original trust with the creator reference genesis adam and eve and the tree of um, good and evil knowledge there so a man moves, so we're going to status is now private. You see, the standing is man, basically, and um, you can be set law, grantor, creditor, agent, principal, uh, agent in office, when I say agent, uh, occupier. Um, you can be many types of positions dependent on what would suit you, what you deem best for you at the time, and dependent on what uh, jurisdiction you are in and what you're doing and whom you're speaking to. And your capacity is going from legal to law, uh, L-O-R-E, Universal Cosmic Law, first and foremost, L-A-W Law, Land, Air, Water, Jaw Process, uh, man is un unable to be legally charged, so to speak, man does not have the legal capacity to be charged, only persons do. So let us look at the travelling communities that do not register their young stars, offspring and children. How do the agents of the Crown, police, policy enforcers deal with these travelling communities? They are often unable to recognise and deal with these communities. Why? So we look at, and we're talking about the implementation of the instrumentation, your person, in whatever form you, uh, you choose to present your person. This is key to elevate also into equity and private remedy as a Christian conscientious objector unable under their faith to claim the father's name in vain and to volunteer to be a person. The persons are governed under Westminster statutory codes that are mandated by default upon the persons, sinners, debtors and trustees. 
granters of dominion is no god is no respecter of persons and god can be referred to as man as i've pointed out in my works and publications with regard to um, the teachings of the mystic character there jesus uh, christ jesus um have i not said ye are all kin kings so if man can be comparable to God made in God's image and uh, we will say for this uh, purpose that God equals man ergo man is no respecter of persons and you just need to check um, some of our recent publications documents or go to look at Psalms in a Bible um, I believe 82 and you will find um, references to that there so we look at the uh, trust technologies and trust themselves legal within United Kingdom, you know, and they're lawful within England and Wales. We look at the types of relationships that are often found to be misconstrued within public state statutory unconscionable actions, uh, statutory implied constructed resulting indentured, etc. unconscionably done. And we see legal within the United Kingdom and lawful within England and Wales. We see the various trustee acts and we've looked at legal persons and legislative directions thereof. We look at the church and the ecclesia and bulla papils of the papal crown, Catholic Roman doctrine, canons, universal codes, admiralty, maritime, Liber code and unidroid. We look at LORE, law as in folk law, law, universal cosmic law. We look at land, air and water, LAW, law. We look at um, the original uh, scriptures um, pre-Jesus, pre-zero in antiquities. We look at the um, Aramaic and the Hebraic text. Uh, so we look at the Torah. We look at the pre-Christian Gnosis from antiquities. We look at the Greek Bible, the New World Testament, KJV, etc. Naked trust in Genesis, tree of life and knowledge. Bite the big apple, no way. So one when one expresses a trust it is more dependent on one's proclaimed status standing and capacity at the given time and remember equity acts in personam meaning there needs to be a person present for equity to be valid and applied and act so for a private express trust to be valid we reference the three certainties that must be met and the case in point reference for that would be night versus night Remember, the original naked trust man was placed into first, written in the ghost spells, the gospels. One who see, seeks equity must do equity. Equity will not aid a volunteer. Do not volunteer any information or forms to the beast, the god of all things, the goat, the moon eye, the mon eye, the monarchy, um, with these transgressions that um, you may need to consider before you actually pursue, you know embark on that we can look at being ambassadors and diplomats witnesses for christ jesus we come we become immune from the legal system and we look at islam judaism and christianity amongst all other religions around the realm and civilizations and um, the formulation of um, the roman emperor constantine making christianity um, the uh, recognized faith of the roman empire and um, we are aware of the uh, pagan rituals that they employed previous to that. Like other religions and faith that are unable, uh, as an ambassador and diplomat witnesses for Christ Jesus, we become immune from the legal system. Like other religions and faith that are unable to be recognised into legal, financial and UK courts. I, David, art of this realm, plain world but i play no part in it how can one be a name we are a party a tripart i i and i e y e and a y e a consciousness a soul a spirit i'm endowed with the spirit of the creator you know and i have a ghost that i give up when i will uh, we give up when we pass you got the holy spirit Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit and the, the Trinity there as well written in the book. So we lay down the beliefs and enter into facts. To believe something without any knowledge is, uh, is silly. It's uh, often a cult style mentality. And um, we say, ciao to prima facie. 
So I want you to take note of this, that the UK of GB is a corporation and it is not a country. It is a corporation masquerading as a country. Remember your person, the Mr, Miss, Mrs, all caps, is your company. You're doing business as them, you are not them. Unless you deem it a benefit to go by a name and to claim that title with the associated public liabilities with that name and title. That's why the legal crown agents and officers and courts address us, for instance, as sir or madam. It's an entitlement and I for one never choose to accept the title of a sir. So riddle me this, what does a sir entail? Why sir? Can anyone explain why the legal profession try to trick us into accepting these titles? I remark, I or we are not the defendant, David and DNA Jeremita. I am not a name. I am called David, son of Jeremita. How can I be a name? There is simply no need to go and register the legal name as an all caps business. Those that create the name own it. We have a company. We have a business and I'm doing business as Mr. with my legal name, Mr. David Jeremita. The Crown copyright name is not ours to use in that respect. So I refer you now back to my first comment. Now with that said in my first statement, let us continue. You need to be careful of the company that you keep. And company is also a military term. You need to make sure that you have a healthy interest and mind your own business as well. Interest and business, they are financial terms. If you are living together as common law man and wife, then you may say he or she is my partner. Partner is indeed a business term. So are you seeing the, the true nature of our debased English language now and how misleading and corrupt English has indeed become? Uh, debased, why is it debased? When you take away uh, the etymological root references of a language, then it becomes debased. And that's what's happened with the removal of various um, academic curricula um, uh, through the uh, ages, the years. Hence why it is of the utmost importance to choose each and every word carefully and to specify for the purposes of clarity and the avoidance of doubt the language one is commanding, oops, commanding officer, more military terminology. So Oxford English Dictionary, it's not, look at a laptop, a computer, when you open it, it will go into default New Times Roman text okay and we need to be careful of the implied meanings and language and the definitions one is using it all stems from the Phoenicians the phonetic text the scripts and the Hebraic text of Judea the definitions equals the deaf Phoenicians hence why a judge the robe the banker may raise their voice and shout at you they are under the impression that one cannot hear them um, the defendant is the deaf end ant defendant my defendants, my defendants of this Lan Gu age, monster of all ages. It is written that in the end times man will be confused and the days will grow shorter and darkness shall befall mankind and the realm. In biblical prophecies all right, of the, uh, of the church. Now where have I heard this before? Some of you may have also heard this and it may remind you of, you know, uh, Egyptian demon, also known as Apep. Apophis, an evil snake demon who tries to eat the sun. It does take some swallowing. He is the great serpent monster who attempts to swallow light for a light snack, thriving on chaos and confusion. He lives in the darkness of the underworld and lies in wait for Ra, the sun god, to appear. Gulp. Are we still at war? Now we go to the Trade and Commerce of the United Kingdom Corporation and we look at December the 22nd, October, hang on, we look at his reference, H.C. Deb, 22nd of October 1940. Mr. Craven Ellis asked the President of the Board of Trade whether the formation by the Government of the United Kingdom Corporation is only a wartime measure and will he give assurance that the Corporation will be wound up immediately after hostilities cease so that the export trade may flow through its normal peacetime channels. Mr. Johnson, the 
The corporation was formed with a view to meeting difficulties in overseas trade, which are due to conditions arising out of the war. <clears throat> it is impossible to foresee the, the conditions that will obtain when hostilities cease, and therefore I cannot say whether at that day it will be desirable to terminate the activities of the corporation. These activities do not, I think, disturb the normal channels of trade, but I can assure my honourable friend that His Majesty's Government have every desire that trade should be freed from wartime restrictions and be conducted in a normal manner at the earliest possible date. So remember, initiates, the United Kingdom of Great Britain is a corporation and not a country. The Government of the United Kingdom Corporation. Let that sink in. The United Kingdom government and the United Kingdom is a corporation pretending to be a country. Your person is how you do business within that corporation. Doing business as the all caps. The formation of the government of the United Kingdom corporation was only a wartime measure. It was meant to be temporary and not all consuming in our everyday lives. That leads me on to what does all war is based on deception mean? What is war deception? A military's unit to attempt to gain an advantage during warfare by misleading its adversaries into taking actions that would harm them is known as military deception. And that's ever so prevalent uh, again now with um, Russia and Ukraine. Remember the illegal war that England and America embarked upon when they bombed the um, bejesus out of the Middle East? Yes. Um, the illegal war that happened in 1990 thereon. Okay, who said war is the art of deception? Sun Tzu said the art of war is deception. And what does Sun Tzu say about war? The victors win first and then go to war, while the defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. What did Sun Tzu say about knowing your enemy? It is impossible to be in danger in a hundred battles, Sun Tzu said. It is impossible to win or lose when you are ignorant of the enemy, but you can win or lose if you know yourself. It is certain that you will be in danger in every battle if you are ignorant of your enemy and yourself. I draw you to the beginning of part one and know thyself. How is deception used in war? Defence uses deception to conceal the true location of our forces in the battle area and to deceive the enemy about our presence. Our real location is hidden to minimise losses as we are not located in the same place. In order to gain intelligence and firepower, we cause the enemy to waste them. We can cause the enemy to act in an unwise manner by misleading him. Now we look at Psy operations and misleading thought leaders and channels and outlets and videos and uh, and the uh, the waste of time and energy, such as why I don't immerse myself 24-7 uh, into things like flat earth theory and other such uh, avenues of uh, research of which I would classify as non-essential and a waste of resources and time and energy. Is war based on deception? Sun Tzu observes, all warfare is based on deception in his iconic art of war. Therefore, when we are able to attack, we appear unable. When we use our forces, we appear inactive. The martial role of deception was best described by Sun Tzu in his statement, all warfare is based on deception. A deceptive act can involve false manoeuvres feigned attacks, misleading orders of battle and the creation of false indications of strength or weaknesses in order to influence an enemy's actions. How was deception used in World War I? It was the first time that deception was tested on such a large scale in World War I. As well as building a bridge in the Jordan Valley, they were able to deceive enemy troops so successfully. A large number of troops could be sent in during the day and withdrawn at night. Is deception allowed in war? Military deception, if practiced in good faith and in line with the um, codes, um, Geneva Code, for example, and other such codes, war criminals um, being labelled today in modern news and so forth, you know, um, if it is done in a manner that is not illegal, has been almost universally accepted throughout the history of Western warfare, it is not implicit or explicit that no promises are broken. 
How was deception used in war? The history of warfare has seen many examples of deception such as feigned retreat, using a false sense of security to ambush the enemy in advance, an army's size is exaggerated or the force is entirely fictional. A legion of Roman soldiers typically consisted of 10,000 men. What are the six principles of military deception? It is helpful to refer to joint publication JP3-58 as a reference point for defining six principles of military deception. Focus, integration, timeliness, security, objective and centralised control. Centralised governments. What is a deception operation? A military deception adversary is an action that deliberately misleads military paramilitary or violent organisation decision makers, thereby causing them to take specific actions or inactions that will contribute to the success of the friendly mission. What does the art of war say about deception? The purpose of warfare is to deceive, therefore when we are able to attack we must appear unable, when using our forces we must appear inactive, when we are near we must make the enemy believe we are far away, when far away we must make him believe we are near, when we are able to attack. What is Sun Tzu's most famous quote? When you are strong, appear strong, and when you are weak, appear weak. In war, the supreme art is to subdue the enemy without fighting. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you won't be frightened by a hundred battles. What does deception mean in the Sun Tzu art of war? In Sun Tzu chapter 5, join battle with the conventional tactics and achieve victory through unconventional tactics. Deception refers to the supremacy of unconventional warfare over conventional warfare as a tradition underpinning of deceptive warfare cheating is a valuable tool so war comes in many forms types you know and um, we look at worship um, w o r s h i p warship w a r s h i p and then i've got a link here to a video i've done which is called birth birth and stillbirth inclusio unis est exclusio alterius and I've also got another link there to Jordan Maxwell Corporation Soul Islam Incorporated um, and I'll expand on that at another time but um, birth includes stillbirth the definition and implied meaning and um, the interpretation of birth includes stillbirth so again on top of everything that I've already outlaid within this document and the two video presentations um, due to their own rules the inclusion of one excludes the remainder, remainder and if birth interpreted in the births, deaths and marriages act um, the interpretation of birth includes stillbirth then it excludes birth so that certificate again is relating to essentially a death certificate legal dead entity, a soulless dead entity and Jordan Maxwell Corporation Soul come from Sister Claire she was um, looking at Corporation Souls and uh, there's Jordan there going on about Islam being registered on the um, stock exchange as a corporation so remember initiates that courts of equity are within common law jurisdiction fact if you look at the evidence provided above you shall find my statement be true hence why I do not hold legal equity in the highest regard Furthermore, many insist on using the common law to defend themselves. Equity lies within the common laws of England and English law. We did not know of this private remedy until recently, and sovereign paralawfuls, paralegals at the time announced uh, our knowledge of equity and trust way back in 2016. Spelling mistake there. I hold English law, equity and the common laws of England in contempt, not just because a person has to be present for English equity to act, but for the reason, first and foremost, you do not see the term common law in scriptures. Bond servants of Christ are only to use God's law. Secondly, the common law is commercial law created by merchants, merchants of Venice, Venetians and influenced by Roman law and used for commercial purposes. The following definitions are taken from a dictionary of law by William C. Anderson of 1893. 
custom of merchants, a system of customs originating among merchants and allowed for the benefit of trade as part of the common law. Page 303, Law Merchant, Law of Merchants. The rules applicable to commercial paper were transplanted into the common law from the law merchant. They had their origin in the customs and course of business of merchants and bankers and are now recognised by the courts because they are demanded by the wants and conveniences of the mercantile world. Pages 670 to 671 Roman Law. Then I have a video link in this document that I have done called Lex Mercatoria Contract Maxims Common Law Gang Masters, which is on the main account I uh, use, Indiglow. The common law of England has been largely influenced by the Roman law in several respects through the development of commercial law. Page 910, all of man's laws except for many maxims of law are commercial in nature. The following are the definitions of maxims and then the relevant maxims of law will be listed. Maxim Bouvier Law Dictionary 1856, an established principle or proposition. A principle of law universally admitted as being just and con consonant with reason. Maxims in law are somewhat like axioms in geometry. They are principles and authorities and part of the legal a part of the general customs or common law of the land and are the sa of the same strength as acts of parliament when the judges have determined what is a maxim which belongs to the judges and not the jury terms delay docked and stood there's a reference there that i don't need to read maxims of the law are holden for law and all of the cases that may be applied to them shall be taken for granted the application of the maxim to the case before the court is generally the only difficulty. The true method of making the application is to ascertain how the maxims arose and to consider whether the case to which it is applied is of the same character or whether it is an exception to an apparently general rule. The alterations of any of the maxims of the common law are dangerous. Maxim William C. Anderson, A Dictionary of Law, 1893, page 666. So called because its value is the highest and its authority the most reliable and because it is accepted by all persons at the very highest. The principles and axioms of law which are general propositions flowing from abstracted reason and not accommodated to times or men are wisely deposited in the breasts of the judges to be applied to such facts as come properly before them. When a principle has been so long practised and so universally acknowledged as to become a maxim, it is obligatory as part of the law. Maxim of Law, Black's Law Dictionary, 3rd edition, 1933, page 1171. An established principle of proposition, a principle of law, universally admitted as being correct statement of the law or as agreeable to reason. Coke defines a maxim to be a conclusion of reason. Coke on Litterton, 11a, he says in another place. A maxim is a proposition to be of all men confessed and granted without proof, argument or discourse. Coke on Littleton 67A, Maxim Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. Maxims are but attempted general statement of rules of law and are law only to the extent of application in adjudicated cases. Now these maxims are taken directly from man's law dictionaries and court cases. The following books were referenced for this article. 1. Bouvier's Law Dictionary by John Bouvier, 1856. 2. Legal Maxims by Broom and Bouvier, 1856. 3. A Dictionary of Law by William C. Anderson, 1893. 4. Black's Law Dictionary by Henry Campbell Black, 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th editions, 1933 to 1990. 5. Maxims of Law by Charles A. Wiseman, 1990. I'm going to take a breath, get a drink. Say hello to G, son of Mick. Oh, just lean now, bit of a twinge in me back. So I'm sitting on fluor. And now we're going to go on to <clears throat> tangy apple juice. Courts and what is an inferior court? And we're going to go through some descriptions of courts 
and um, references to various subjects surrounding that of which um, I, th I believe will interest you. Okay, so uh, an inferior court is subject to the supervisory jurisdiction of the High Court so that if a party feels a decision is unration irrational or unlawful, one can judicially review that appeal in the High Court. You may have heard us talk of High Court judicial reviews. Most superior courts are courts of record, whilst many inferior courts have statutory powers to punish contempt. So, initiates. You're welcome, G-Man, son of Mick. My pleasure. What are three inferior courts? What are the three inferior courts? Despite numerous efforts to change the system, it persisted except for one brief period until 1891. Since then, the state or federal judicial system has consisted of district courts with original jurisdiction, intermediate appellate courts and the Supreme Court. What are the inferior courts of the UK, David? Get to the point. We're in England. We'd like to know about the inferior courts you mentioned. Public, legal, civil UK. And then you mentioned higher courts of England, England and Wales and English law. And we use lawful remedy for legal situations. Break it down for me. It will be my pleasure. And it's contained on page 44 out of 90 in this 25, 26,000 word document. An inferior court, for example, a magistrate's court or a local court has limited jurisdiction over smaller summary matters with a lower monetary threshold than the intermediate courts of each state and territory. Their jurisdiction is like, uh, is like intermediate courts prescribed by statute in each state and territory. They do not operate within the laws of England. Capiche? Queen's Bench? What type of court? The Royal Courts of Justice? What type of court? What is the administration of justice? What do inferior courts rule on? Courts of limited jurisdiction, or a better term, inferior courts. These are often staffed by part-time judges who are seldom or not qualified and trained in the law, or even legally qualified and trained, let alone lawfully qualified, trained and um, registered, licensed and etc because they are not registered to a governing institution. Magistrates had to take expert legal advice when they went out to deliberate um, in the magistrates of Oxford Court when I went down to help him, one of our brothers, Thomas, with um, a traffic contravention made by a traffic officer when we was at the, um, the, um, the hearing under cross-examination. Okay, so when we presented the case, we was there uh, and representing um, that well that the Oxford magistrates, all three of them, had to call an expert legal advice to end up finally discharging the charges made by the traffic officer. So I know exactly what I'm on about and I've been there and done it and we've had positive results with this. So they are not registered to a governing institution. They handle minor civil cases involving small sums of money, such as bill collections and minor criminal cases carrying light penalties. How must inferior courts interpret the law? Generally, the House of Lords Parliament in, in, across the pond Congress determines the jurisdiction of the federal courts. The inferior courts are constrained by the decision of the Supreme Court. Once the Supreme Court interprets the law, inferior courts must apply the Supreme Court's interpretation to the facts of a particular case, which is why we and I and SPLS Pro like to give you case and point references um, from such publications as what I've got on my bookshelf and from what we found in the public domain. What are the three types of court? The Crown, State, Federal Court System has three main levels. District Courts, the Trial Court, Circuit or Circus Courts as we call them, which are the first level appeal, and the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom and obviously the United States, the final level of appeal in the State and Federal System. What cases go to Supreme Court? The United Kingdom State Supreme Court is a Federal Court, meaning that in part meaning in part that it can hear cases prosecuted by UK and um, you've also got US government. The court also decides civil cases. The court can also hear just about any kind of state court case as long as it involves state federal law, including the constitution. 
How are inferior courts created? Inferior courts will be created by Parliament or Congress from time to time. The US Constitution itself created only the Supreme Court but allowed Congress to create other inferior lower courts over time. Thus, as the caseload of the Supreme Court grew, Congress was able to create lower federal courts. Which courts hear the most cases? At the top of the pyramid is the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is the highest court in the state federal system. The Supreme Court is often called the highest court in the land because it hears appeals from state courts as well as federal courts. What is the U highest UK court? Now that's a bit of an oxymoron because that would, you know, hear me out. But the highest English court is, um, you know, um, we got the Lords, uh, the House of Lords in this. Uh, in October 2009, the Supreme Court replaced the Appellate Committee of the House of Lords as the highest court in the United Kingdom. And we remember that they have the, um, they have the Lord Select Committee as well and you have the uh, Lord Chancellor to think of as well with regards to England and higher courts. The Supreme Court 12 Justices maintain the highest standards set by the Appellate Committee but are now explicitly separate from both Government and Parliament. So related topics and offices are the Lord Select Committee, the Lord Chief Justice and the Lord Chancellor. Is a Crown Court higher than a Magistrate's? All criminal cases will begin in the Magistrates Court and only a small percentage of the most serious ones will be referred to the Higher Crown Court. No jury is involved in the Magistrates Court. We reference Halsbury's and the commentary on Halsbury's and administrative hearings. The Crown Court, if you have common committed a more serious offence, you will be sent to the Crown Court for trial. So we've got offences and infractions and breaches of policy in the lower inferior courts and then we've got crimes committed, harm, injury and loss, breaches of common law in all its forms that would be with a victim and under the laws of England and Wales, biblical laws and political human rights, United Nations and other such uh, treaties, accords and covenants would be uh, looked at by the Crown Court and trial by jury. One cannot be deemed guilty and said to be guilty unless judged by a jury of their peers. What is the lowest court in the UK? Magistrates courts. All criminal cases start in a magistrate court. Cases are heard by either two or three magistrates. What are a criminal offence, another oxymoron, it's either criminal and as a victim or it's offence of UK public civil policy. So again, criminal, again, when I mention in this realm discovery teachings and, and doctrines that I find, even myself, I'm there uh, often late at night thinking, oh my days, it's no wonder man has such a hard time deciphering all of this and cognizing and, and trying to uh, use all of this information in a practical, um, comprehensive, you know, making something useful out of all this information when you come across such terminology that's just um, a perversion of language in itself. Um, so yeah, I, I, I hope you appreciate the little extra bits that we put in here, you know, for uh, for you for your consideration. All right, so I just um, lost my page there. Magistrates' courts. What other two? All right. What are two types of inferior courts? So I got the Crown Court. Is a Crown Court higher than the Crown Court? If you have committed a more serious offence, you will be sent to the Crown Court for trial. What is the lowest court in the UK? Magistrates Courts. Yeah, I read that. Two type. What are the two types of inferior courts in the United States? Congress settled on two separate categories of lower federal courts: the constitutional courts and the special courts. Are state courts inferior? All courts that are not superior courts are inferior courts. Intermediate courts, such as the district court, are therefore technically inferior courts. Magistrates make decisions in the lower courts, the state local courts and the federal circuit court. And remember, not all decisions by courts and judges are final. Can the judicial branch create inferior courts? The judicial power of the United Kingdom, United States, shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. 
what is the judicial branch responsible for? The judicial branch is in charge of deciding the meaning of laws, how to apply them to real situations and whether a law breaks the rules of the constitution and the constitution is seemingly uh, is the highest law of a nation a nation state the u.s supreme court the highest court in the united states is part of the judicial branch who can create new courts article 3 of the constitution invests the judicial power of the united states in the federal court system article 3 section 1 specifically creates the u.s supreme court and gives congress the authority to create the lower federal courts what is the highest court in the United States? The Supreme Court is the highest court in the United States. Article 3 of the US Constitution created the Supreme Court and authorized Congress to pass laws establishing a system of lower courts. Which types of law is there not an injury? The two types of trials, two types of trials have juries, criminal trials and civil trials. Juvenile and family law trials do not have juries private civil cases. How does a case progress through the courts? Trials in criminal and civil cases are generally conducted the same way. After all the evidence has been presented and the judge has explained the law related to the case to a jury, the jurors decide the facts in the case and render a verdict. If there is no jury, the judge will make a decision on the case. Remember to uh, ask about jury nullification if you are a uh, ever uh, called up for jury service i shall never be because i'm not registered affiliated and recorded neither is my person man is not but uh, my person is not um on such registrars and never has been and um so therefore will not be called to a uh, jury service lord wolf's reforms and civil procedure rules 1998 applicable back to england now lord wolf's reforms reforms were initially intended to help reduce the cost and time court spent on civil proceedings he identified in his original report that the three critical issues facing the civil justice system at the time were cost delays and complexity to combat the problems that he saw as being prevalent with the system Lord Wolfe proposed changes to the ways of the standard procedure landscape such as litigation to be as often as is possible. There should be an increase in the usage of alternative dispute resolution and similar such alternative methods of dispute resolution. The cost of litigation should be more affordable for the general public which would make it so that those of lower financial ability would be able to pursue a lawsuit on an equal or similar level to those with higher means. I draw you back to video one and my detailed analysis and presentment of um, in one's proper person pro se for the skin and um, pro for say um, of and you've got pro se cutor okay and cute cuticle cuter skin in one's own skin in one's own proper person um litigant in person litigation litigation as a process would become less complex the methods of litigation would become less time consuming and would therefore lead to swifter justice the entire idea behind the proposed reforms was to make the system more approachable and user friendly it was and it was recommended to have the added caveat of also cutting tax spending on the court system which would benefit both the government and the people of england and wales what is the difference between a high court and a supreme court the difference between supreme court and high court supreme court and the high court are uh, the judicial bodies set up by the constitution supreme court stands at the topmost rank and is the final court of appeal let me find something else to uh, change it to high court is the primary judicial body at the state or union territory level what are the four types of cases the Supreme Court hears? More specifically, federal courts hear criminal, civil and bankruptcy cases. And once a case is decided, it can often be appealed. Why were the inferior courts created? They were created to relieve some of the cases on the Supreme Court's overflowing docket, boat, dock, 
doctor, docky, and take them on. Exclusive jurisdiction is when cases can only be heard in federal courts and concurrent jurisdiction is when cases can be heard in both federal and state courts. Which of the following is formally known as inferior courts? The judicial power is invested in the Supreme Court as well as in the lower courts as, uh, as may be established by law. I've made a massive mistake there. Me. I'll put my he. The inferior courts include the Court of Appeals, the Court of Tax Appeals, the Regional Trial Courts, the Metropolitan Trial Courts and the Office of the Ombudsman. England initiates now search for the following Courts of Equity, Supreme Courts, High Court Judicial Review, Lord Chancellor, Ecclesiastical Courts, the Lord Chief Justice of England and Wales, the 1873-1875 Judicature Act. In England, the Act of Parliament that created the Supreme Court of Judicature and also inter alia enhanced the role of the House of Lords to act as a Court of Appeal. Essentially, the Act was a first modern attempt to reduce the clutter and the consequent inefficiency of courts that had specific powers of jurisdiction throughout England and Wales. The Judicature Acts of 1873 and 1875, UK Parliament, the Judicature Acts of those years, the higher court system which had existed since the Middle Ages was completely reorganised by the Judicature Acts passed by Parliament in 73-75, Industrial Interests. As requested many times, information regarding the structure and inherent authority, jurisdiction of US, American, Canadian, UK, England, judicial system has been provided to you. He who comes into equity must come with clean hands, explained by I. David and SPLSPRO.com. Common law is ruled and governed by equity. Equity is the soul and spirit of law. I have a quote here for you to back up what I am saying. I've given you my notice of intent that common law is ruled and governed by equity and that equity is the soul and spirit of the law. And so now I, David, give you my SOI, my statement of interest to back up and clarify my claim that equity is higher than common law. Here is one proof of the following. The following quote is from the American Institute of American Law, 1882 by John Bouvier. Soul and spirit of the law equity law is nothing without equity and equity is everything even without law those who perceive what is just and what is unjust only through the eyes of the law never see it as well as those who behold it with the eyes of equity law may be looked upon in some manner as an assistance for those who have a weak perception of right and wrong in the same way that optical glasses are useful for those who are short-sighted or those whose visual organs are deficient. What, what? Equity, in its true and genuine meaning, is the soul and the spirit of the law. Positive law is construed and rational law is made by it. Institutes of American Law, 1882, Volume 2, 3724, Paragraph 4, John Bouvier. Equity is not law. Equity is in the soul and the spirit of the law. Capiche? the rights and spirit of equity are identified as and embody the very energy of righteousness now where have we heard that word before equity supersedes common law as well as statute law but you will have a runaround trying to establish a court of equity but equity is part of common law when i say common law common law as you know it statutory legislation uk public civil legal okay when I say that, because equity is within the common law, it's within the civil procedure rules, and it was merged within common law, the part of 1873-75, a judicature act, all right? But we need to say that equity does, in um, where, the, where, the, um, where the ruling of common law and those of equity collide, equity shall prevail. In equity, the judge would make a ruling or decision based on the principalities of what the fair and just decision would be. Invoking equity in the courts would simply be to bring justice, to bring grace and to bring mercy. The law cannot be fulfilled without equity because equity is love and love is all. 
do you want to follow the written word of the law in the commercial world of the dead or do you want to walk in peace love and equity as a living light on the land come and join us at splspro.com the rosetta stone of legal and lawful teachings love and light now initiates let us look once again at christ's teaching the character the mystic christ jesus jesus christ and here is another analogy from the heliocentric bibliotech king james version 1611 authorized version john chapter 8 verses 7 to 16 so when they continued asking him he lifted up himself and said unto them he that is without sin among you let him for cast the first stone at her and again he stooped down and wrote on the ground and they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one beginning at the eldest even until the last and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst and when Jesus when Jesus had lifted him up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No. No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came and whither I go, but ye cannot tell whence I come and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me, I and the Father are one. Christ wasn't operating at common law above, do you now see? Christ went against the law of the land, which said that they get to stone the lady to death, as she was with somebody else when she wasn't supposed to be. Christ there was operating within equitable terms. Now we're going to go on to maritime uh, admiralty law word magic. This is my favourite part of all that I do, of all my discoveries. I love etymology, etymological root references, etym etymology in itself. I love the comparison and the contrast to um, all of the languages, the Aramaic, the Sanskrit, the Hebrew, the hieroglyph, the cuneiform, pictograph, geoglyphs, um, all language, all writings, uh, the Latin, the Roman English, the uh, Old English, the Francais, Italian, Greek, alpha, beta, alphabets. This is my bag. And word magic, spell casting, spellings, um, understanding, innerstanding, overstanding, magic. Um, so understanding words is what you really need to start doing, doing your homework and understanding words, swords, understanding law and the words of law. There are two things this planet has, water and earth, water and land. Consequently, there are two kinds of law, the law of the land and the law of the water. Word magic is a simple perversion of language has it made it possible to convince people around the world that these alternative laws apply to them? One of the predominant beliefs in modern culture is that licenses, permits, registrations and other forms of documentation are required to operate motor vehicles, use public roads, build structures and establishment and engage in free enterprise and much more. That's a spelling mistake there. Mary, Mary um, mar maritime or maritime words are commonly used today in everyday conversation. Maritime words relate to nautical, sea, ocean, shipping and navigation. Roads, they are made out of cement. They are meant to be the sea. The cement, meant to be the sea. Do you get that? Here we go, we're off. Siemens, S-I-E-M-E-N-S. -E -E That's a, a technological company, a company that involves phones, mobile, data, 
technology in itself, Siemens. And then we've got S-E-A-M-E-N, Seamen, operate these traffic light systems in the UK um, as we know it today. So roads are made out of Seamen because they're meant to be the sea. And Siemens operate the traffic light systems. You couldn't make it up. You couldn't Adam and Eve it. But here we are and we continue on. Let's look at some examples of maritime lingua at work. You place your home on the market, the, or the real estate market, you are putting it up for sale, S-A-L-E, oblique S-A-I-L, boats have sails. When we are born, we are issued with a birth certificate, or birth certificate, what? B-I-R-T-H, oblique B-E-R-T-H. Boats have births, you know. Boats have bottles smashed on them when they are you know, first led down to the sea. When a boat is unshipworthy, it is arrested in the harbour. And the dock, D-O-C-K, oblique D-O-C-T-O-R, doctor, or D-O-C-K-E-D-O-R-E, docked, or, or, signs your birth or birth certificate as well as your death certificate. Well, the doctor would sign your certificate of live birth, um, to be fair, not the birth certificate, so that's a little error I'll put there. A birth in nautical terms is a space where a vehicle can be parked or docked for as loading or unloading. When a ship berths in a port or dock, the captain has to produce a birth certificate, and ship is an anagram of hips. What? I know. When you are born, you come through, through your mother's birth canal. And you come through water. When a product leaves the warehouse, it is shipped from the warehouse to the destination. Why would you use the word ship or shipped when it's being transported in an automobile? You connect a device such as a printer or USB cable to a port, USB port or porthole opening on your computer. A porthole on a ship is the term used to describe the windows or openings on a vessel. The word originates from the French word port, which means door. There is a kernel processor in a computer, K-E-R-N-E-L. And then you've got C-O-L-O-N-E-L, kernel, kernel of the army. When you have to clean and organize a space to get it into ship shape, this expression arose from the inspections that were started during the 1800s to ensure ships were clean enough so as to not bring anything such as disease into a port. When inspected and accepted for port entry, they were said to be in ship shape. If the ship had infected sailors and merchants on it, it was quarantined for 40 days. The word quarantine comes from the Italian word 40 days. The term derives from Quaranta Gioni, meaning 40 days, and traces back to the 14th century when the city of Dubrovnik, now in Croatia, was under Venetian rule. The Great Pestilence, or the Great Plague as it was known at the time, was devastating Europe. As a form of protection, Dubrovnik declared that all ships and people had to be isolated for 40 days before entering the city. Later, the disease would be referred to as the Black Death, probably because of the gloom it brought, although some theorise that the black referred to the terrible dark bruising of the skin due to internal bleeding, a hallmark of the disease. That was found from Inferno. Tom Hanks, thanks. The word captain comes from the word capital, equals money, equals water. In a courtroom setting, the dock is an enclosed space where the defendant, defendant, sits and sits in a court of law. In nautical terms, a dock is a structure extending along shore or out from the shore into a body of water to which boats may be moored. When you go to court, your case is placed in, and what did I mention earlier? And I, I, uh, I made sure to express that word, dock it. A docket is an abridged entry of a judgment or proceeding in an action or register of such entries. A book of original, kept by clerks of courts, containing a formal list of the names of parties and minutes of the proceeding in each case in court. Money is water. 
one can spend money like running water through one's hands liquid cash liquidated assets frozen police shall freeze legal tender currency water and oceans have a current you have water marks within the promissory notes there that aren't money that are in fact credits issued by private banking cartels electrical currents charge bank of batteries the dead are charged back to life with paddles after a heart attack question where do you find a bank answer on both sides of a river River banks, banks control the current, currency or flow of water, money. Um, Pao Chang coming through, I still haven't managed to message or get in touch with him. Um, I'm not sure if this is his original workings here that I've adopted or if it was from another website that didn't mention Pao Chang. Then later I come to found of Pao Chang, know of Pao Chang and now I'm like, aha, that's where um, that website that I got this from has got it from because now I've found Pao Chang. Nobody referenced him, but I will take the time to say I'm sure it's Pao Chang. Riverbanks, banks of the river control the current currency or flow of water and money. If you are losing your house, they say your house is underwater. And when you are in a lot of debts, they say you are drowning in debt. Your business is going under. If you get in trouble and go to jail, somebody must bail you out. The verb bail also means to scoop water out of a boat. We say to someone, money goes through your hands like water. I also reference within um, trust and equity publications and relationships there, Bailey and Bay Law relationships. There are also many terms that have the word ship, a vessel of considerable size for deep water navigation in it. There are lots. Do a search. Ownership, citizenship, leadership, rulership, lordship, relationship, partnership, scholarship, apprenticeship and dealership. Just to name a few common ones that we are all familiar with. Common law or the law of the land is what the lawful statute law or maritime law of law of the ocean is what we call legal. The law of the sea. Ocean is banking law. It is international by nature. David Icke states that the United States flag, he did state a while ago, um, in every federal court building, court, school or wherever are framed with a gold yellow fringe because of the meaning this has in maritime law. Not so much relevant today, but at the time David Icke mentioned that it was and we saw that. Now we're going into legal versus lawful. David, what's the difference? I'm confused. Legal is the undoing of God's law. You profess to us. You talk about having lawful remedies for legal situations. But pray tell, help me understand what is legal, what is lawful. Can you have like a Harry Hill, who will win legal and lawful? Yes, we can. And here we go. Legal, lawful. Legitimate are some words that describe things, events and activities that are permitted by law and do not attract punishment under the law. However, the words legal and lawful are not synonymous as many believe as there are subtle differences between the two. Uh, knowing these differences can be beneficial for some people in order to stay away from the clutches of the law. The article attempts to, to throw light on some of these differences. So we're going to start first by going through um, with legal. Okay, and um, if I may just do so, I'd like to add a little bit of colour and... Um, maybe not that one. Where's my cave? I've got Dave in a cave somewhere. This one. Let's get in my cave. Legal, we remain confused because of the technical jargon used by uh, lawyers, attorneys and briefs and are often misled by the facts pertaining to law. However, the blame can be seen to lie on us as we allow ourselves to be misled. Legal is a word that pertains to the science of law, its administration, its understanding and even its practice. This is why everything associated with this profession is termed as legal and even the advice given by attorneys to their clients is termed legal advice, legal aid. Do not get infected with legal aids. When we hear the word legal, we visualize the word law, the courts, the lawyers, the judges and all the paraphernalia that together constitutes the legal system is thus clear. 
that anything that pertains to or is based upon law is referred to as legal. When I say there are paradoxical situations, you've not really helped me understand that, David, because you've just said that. So solicitors, lawyers, lawyers do legal. So they should be called legalers, not solicitors. All right, you've heard me right. And we're going to continue on now with lawful. When an event, thing, structure, organisation, agreement, etc. are in accordance with the law or are permitted and sanctioned by the law of the land, they are said to be lawful. Anything that conforms to or is recognised by law is automatically lawful. Anything lawful is considered to be not forbidden by law. One can consider anything that is valid as lawful. What is the difference between legal and lawful? Legal pertains to everything concerned with law, while lawful relates with substance of law. Legal is more concerned with the form of law. If something is lawful, it is not forbidden by law. Lawful places thrust on ethical content in law and focuses on the spirit of law, whereas legal attaches more importance to the form of law. This question indeed does get asked a lot. A high court judge will rule that the act is unlawful. They will seldom remark that it was illegal. Okay, so I've tried my damnedest to get this document and this presentation and these videos into such a flow that uh, one thing leads on to another and uh, over this journey of this presentation and reading through this document and uh, highlighting it and making notes and then going off and researching and coming back it should all start dropping into place now I say about persons and man and I say that your person is a public you know legal so you've got a person public and legal and then you have man that is private and lawful. Okay, so when I say legal and lawful and the difference, that needs re-embossing and it's a perfect segue for me to go legal, public legal person, your instrument, your certified person, your doing business as, your title, your name, your company, yes? You know, be mindful of your company that you keep and mind your own business and make sure you have a healthy interest. You know what I said before. So a public legal person, legal, United Kingdom, civil, policy as well. And then man, private, lawful man. Man doesn't have the capacity to be legally charged. That's why equity acts on a person. But then God is no respecter of persons. So we've got another paradoxical situation on top of a paradoxical situation in stark contrast to the aforementioned. OK, I get that, which is why we're here and why many have so much of a, of a brain scramble when trying to decipher this uh, ungodly uh, realm uh, most deeds that I, David, execute are all illegal. As legal is for my person and within the United Kingdom, Kingdom's jurisdiction. So I, in fact, am an outlaw. Yes, in that by the above, you know, legal lawful comparisons, I am not. Even though I uh, look at Abrahamic law, I look at cosmic universal law, I look at doing um, executing my deeds in accordance with conscionable actions to harm no other, to do wrong to no other, to defraud no other, to be honourable, to be kind, to, you know, all of these... Uh, uh, common law duties and obligations that we expect from one another by by um, by default but i also operate very very much lawfully and i draw your attention to such publications over there that you cannot see because of my background but um knowledge of the higher worlds attainment of the higher worlds rudolf steiner alan watt um you know blavatsky um ralph waldo emerson neville goddard such others of which, um, you know, I can't mention all of, but, um, you know, uh, the Bible itself, the uh, Old Testament, the Aramaic, Hebraic text, the Dead Sea Scrolls, the teachings of, you know, when I say lawful, um, uh, you could argue that the teachings of Gabriel were found. Have any of you known of the Gabriel inscription or the Gabriel stone? No? Possibly not. Most likely no. Well, when I mentioned the pre-Christian cross and Christianity before Christianity, there is um, there is in the black market a tablet that has been sold 
and um, kept away from the Smithsonian's and the ones that covet and delete and edit and um, you know um, the institutions and establishments that keep us um, in the dark they have found um, a stone which mentions um, Shimeon, Simon I believe and the crucifixion of him and coming back to life after three days um, written by Gabriel in the Aramaic uh, or even Hebrew text around Judea or um, Nazareth or um, I forget now because this is off topic but um, when I speak of law and certain things and how we've been tricked and Romans and new Roman texts and Greeks, Egyptians uh, to modern day and how this has gone and been uh, twisted to suit such people, then um, we need to be careful of these laws and teachings because they are to suit the winners of the war, of the battles gone by. So I am very much uh, universally, cosmically lawful. My person is legal and public offences, infractions of rules and policy are not um, crimes, they are offences, exactly what they are. Legal can be seen as the undoing of the creator's God's law. Law resides within England. You know, private crimes have a victim. Crimes have a victim and often happen in the private, yes. So, um, man is private, persons are public. Law versus policy. We choose our representative based upon their ideologies and their thinking upon various social issues that matter to us. It is these legislators that decide on principles that are rules guiding the working of a government. An elected government has many matters to look at after in the spheres of health, education, environment, economy, etc. And it is the guiding principles of, or the policies of the government that finally decide the shape of laws made in all walks of life. I use the word laws loosely, legal constraints, policy, statute, act, etc. Though laws are outcomes of policies of a government they are different from policies as will hopefully become clear from this document then we look at the word policy we got the word pol we've got pol ice we've got off ice we've got police with a y policy policy all right now we look at pole of a battery we look at assault and battery we look at battery charge we look at police cells we look at cell telephones we look at telephones that poll and triangulate polling and voting the electorate the electricity all right we look at polling stations polarity poll charge police poll ic off ice i could go on jack jack plug terminal airport terminal terminated these terms are not coincidental pine spine watch your back jack lumberjack back spine has lumbers jack me up jump in jack flash <laughs> gotta make it fun and that's just a little bit that's just a little sprinkling of word magic for your word porn fans god the apple juice is tingly <laughs> Ah, sipping on grandpa's old juice, eh? Policies are objectives that an organisation or a government sets for itself to achieve in a given period of time. Laws are the tools that help a government achieve these objectives. For example, a government may have views in the sphere of health and education with certain objectives in mind, as we see in today's present society, post-Covid, Covid virus. Um, uh, corona um, you know and all of that to bear in mind it formulates policies as guidelines or a framework to move forward in the desired direction and it is these principles outlined in policies that help a government to come up with proposed laws uh, policies describe the objectives and missions of a government and how it proposes to achieve these objectives using various methods and principles a policy document should not be misconstrued as law. However, new laws in various spheres of social life, such as health, education, finance, etc., reflect the intentions of the government. So, you 
get to know the goals of government reading its policy statement. Directives set out in a policy statement become laws only when the government is able to present and push through the draft bills in the Houses of Parliament. Law, again only applicable to ones in public offices or employed by government. Yeah, so uh, again, this uh, this is to be cemented in that the uh, statutes, acts and public codes that are mandated out of Westminster upon your person by default are applicable to government employees only. We are supposed to follow such things as the Ten Commandments um, scripture in various forms not just Christian or Catholic various forms of common law um, universal cosmic law and um, such things as deeds my word is my bond and my assurance there and my word is is, uh, is, is my bond um, I only have promises to give you Act versus legislation. In the parliamentary system of democracy, members of parliament are called legislators and the acts passed by these legislators become legislation or laws once they get the royal assent, un royal assent of Queen Elizabeth II, aka QE2, kings or a president. Through referring the same legal term, acts and legislation differ from each other narrowly and this difference will be talked about in this document. An act of parliament is a type of legislation sometimes referred to as primary legislation. Over the last two years we've seen secondary emergency legislation being imposed. Nobody from the opposition such as Keir objecting to it and nobody in parliament really objecting to it. It's just kind of gone through wish wash you know bish bash bosh and it was in secondary emergency legislation with regard to the virus covid and corona most of the acts are introduced by the government though it is not uncommon to see private members introducing draft legislation called as private members white paper and then into a bill remember we have lobbyists as well and what all that is about when i say private then at this stage the act is called a bill and it is only after deliberation by the members of parliament and their approval that the bill is sent to qe2 king president for approval after the nod or assent by the ruler the act finally sees the light of day and is declared a piece of legislation or law applicable on all citizens of the country or specific to a particular section of the society. These are public acts, private acts and hybrid acts. While public acts are meant to be applied on all citizens of the country, private acts are meant for specific people. A hybrid act is an act that has elements of both public and private acts. A bill proposed by a private member of the executive is debated by the members of parliament and is passed after suitable amendments that are accepted to the majority of the legislators. Once the bill is passed by the parliament and given assent by the ruler, it becomes a law and a legislation like previous laws of the land are uh, applicable upon one and sundry. When I say it becomes law, it becomes legally binding. I hope that helps. Again, these bills and acts and legislation are only applicable to those in UK public office persons and wards of the state, aka government employees. If you're not working for the government and you're not a person and you're not in the UK and you're a private lawful man, womb man, authentic sovereign with your sovereignty intact and you are in England and Wales and not in the UK and um, you're lawful, therefore, these cannot apply to you for your instrument, your certified person, okay? they are for um, the uh, the doing business as who do not wish to accept the public liabilities that uh, that uh, are attached to your public legal person then again do not claim the name I am only known to go by a name when it is a benefit to me see video one and um, you will become more knowledgeable on that so word porn fans today's show is brought to you with the letter x and number 10 i now have this for your considerations we're going to get to the heart of the matters 
sole traders of sole corporate companies, body corpses, corpus juris is what we find. The amalgamation of church and state under the papacy, the paparazzi, the sea of paper rats as a backup voice of Satan. Satan, they all serve X. X in Roman numerals equals 10. So X is 10, X is tensile. Wait, though, I need you to actually see this. Let's um, let's just pause this a moment. Let me um, let me get to my uh, button. Share screen. Let's do this. Okay then. Let's make it a bit bigger so those on mobile devices can see it a bit better, like the nose. Our last will be back in a bit. We are on page 58 of 90. So when Queen Anna Maria and Princess Yanka come back, I will stop this video and we will go for a part three sometime very soon. So we are here. They all serve X. X is 10. X is stential. X is tensile. I want you to just take a moment there. Okay, we seem to exist in an existential linear realm and universe. So exist, existence, X is 10, C. So we have the word existence, X is 10, with and then C, E, okay there. And then we break the exist, existence, X is 10, so we have X is 10, C. The C there is that C there. So to e, X, X is 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 10 is 10 and c is c the c of 10 then we go through satan you want you to say 10 i want you to look at saturn and you think about the saturnalia uh, cult or uh, satan of saturn the eater of its children from the garden of eton eden eden and then I found Eden Burr just for the kicks as I was writing it. As they say, man is delivered from the cervix okay, of mum. Now that would be the cervix, okay, which is the cervical cervix of the mothership. I'm not saying mums are motherships, but how they are viewed. Products delivered down the uh, canal and the cervix of the mother. The mother in the hospital is delivering a product, you know. The cervix is the lower part of the uterus situated between the external um, orifice and internal internal orifice the orifice officer of officers orifices the cervical canal connects the interior of the vagina and the cavity of the body of uterus the cervix is part of the female reproductive system fact so is it just me or is the above slightly in the outer limits of vocabulary in the beginning there was the word. The creator is said to have made it known that he is the Alpha and the Omega. Now initiates, Alpha is the first letter in the Greek alphabet, Alpha Beta, Alphabet, and Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. Perhaps my fixation on words is now becoming clearer to some of you. The spelling and spell casting of my broadcast publications is due to this fact and others I shall not mention right now. Um, in the Greek alphabet, no, oh, in the Hebrew alphabet, let's get it right. X is the last letter. Now X cross, okay, is marks the end. So the X, which is a cross on its side, making the X, it's the last letter, which means final, the end, no more. Okay, so that's why we have as well the X to consider with regards to um, the crucifixion, cross, the T, the X, the plus. When you, um, right in the past, signing, if you was illiterate and you was presented with something and you didn't understand it and you couldn't read it, you could sign an X instead of a signature. And then whoever was looking at that agreement or contract would know that the X denoted illiteracy as well. Someone who is illiterate would sign X, which means that they can't read the document and they haven't understood anything. So it's non-legally binding. X marks the spot, my pirate hunters. 
and your baby product is delivered by a doctor or doctor down a birthing canal in a delivery room or a delivery suite. It's more boat people talk. Only commercial products are delivered. And now we're going into the works of Ralph Waldo Emerson. I think it was um, some disclosure with Dr. Stephen Greer that I got this from initially. I don't know which um, documentary CE5 um, what's Dr. Stephen Greer done with regards to UFO disclosure, disclosure product? I can't think of the, uh, um, there's a video title of a documentary that I'd like to pop in here. Um, and I can't think of it. But this is where I first popped, uh, I had Ralph Waldo Emerson uh, come into my realm some years ago. Nature centers into balls and her proud F emeralds fast to service and outside scan the profile of the sphere knew they what that signified a new genesis were here the eye is the first circle the horizon which it forms is the second and throughout nature this primary figure is repeated without end it is the highest emblem in the cipher of the world Saint Augustine described the nature of God as a circle whose center was everywhere and its circumference nowhere. We are all our lifetime reading the copious sense of this first of forms. One moral we may have one moral we have already deduced in considering the circular or compensatory character of every human action. Another analogy we shall now trace that every action admits of being outdone. Our life is an apprenticeship to the truth. That around every circle another can be drawn. That there is no end in nature, but every end is a beginning. Then that there is always another dawn risen on mid-noon. And under every deep, a lower deep opens. Ralph Waldo Emerson, Essays, First Series, 1841. Circles Note. Nature centres into balls. Note and her proud ephemerals, fast to surface and outside, scanned the profile of the sphere, knew what they signified, a new genesis were here. Sorry my darling, hello. Don't leave the key in the door, because you can't get in. I shall now continue reading on. The I know is the first circle, the horizon which it forms is the second, and throughout nature this primary figure is repeated. Without end it is the highest emblem in the cipher of the world. Saint Augustine, no, oh, I've copied, I need to take this out, and you see this one's a repetition. Wait, wait, wait. The fact as far as it symbolizes the moral fact of the unattainable, the flying perfect note around which the hands of man can never meet, at once the inspirer and the condemner of every success, may conveniently serve as to connect many illustrations of human power in every department. There are no fixtures in nature. The universe is fluid and volatile. Performance is but a word of degrees. Our realm, plane, globe, global seen by god is a transparent law not a mass of facts the law dissolves the facts and holds it fluid our culture is the predominance of an idea which draws after it this train of cities and institutions let us rise into another idea they will disappear the greek sculpture is all melted away as if it had been statues of ice here and there a solitary figure or fragment remaining, as we see flecks and scraps of snow left in cold dells and mountain clefts in June and July. For the genius that created it creates now somewhat else. The Greek letters last a little longer, but are already passing under the same sentence and tumbling into the inevitable pit which the creation of new thought opens for all that is old. The new continents are built out of the ruins of an old planet. The new races fed out of the decomposition of the foregoing. New arts destroy the old. See the investment of capital in aqueducts made, by use, made useless by hydraulics, fortifications by gunpowder, 
roads and canals by, by railways, sails by steam, steam by electricity. One man's justice is another's injustice. One man's beauty is another's ugliness. One man's wisdom, another's folly. As one beholds the same objects from a higher point, one man thinks justice consists in paying debts and has no measure in his abhorrence of another who is very remiss in this duty and makes the creditor wait tediously. But that second man has his own way of looking at things, asks himself which debt must I pay first to the debt to the rich or the debt to the poor? The debt of money or the debt of thought to mankind, of genius to nature, for you, O broker, there is no other principle but arithmetic. For me, commerce is of trivial import, love, faith, truth of character, the aspiration of man. These are sacred, nor can I detach one duty, like you, from all other duties and concentrate my forces mechanically on the payment of monies. Let me live onward. You shall find that, though slower, the progress of my character will liquidate all these debts without injustice to higher claims. If man should dedicate himself to the payment of notes, would, this, would not this be injustice? Does he owe no debt but money? And are all claims on him to be po postponed to a landlord or bankers? There is no virtue which is final, all are initial. The virtues of society are vices of the saint. The terror of reform is the discovery that we must cast away our virtues or what we have always esteemed such. Into the same pit that has consumed our grosser vices. Forgive his crimes, forgive his virtues too. Those smaller faults half converts to the right. A new statement is always hated by the old and to those dwelling in the old comes like an abyss of scepticism. Remember, for a contract or any agreement that comes under English law to be formed lawfully or legally, there are eight essential elements to them. There must be the following. An offer acceptance, sufficient consideration, capacity to contract, intention to enter into legal relations, legality of purpose, genuine consent and certainty of terms. Otherwise, we conclude tort of battery, unfair contracts. Natural persons, juridical persons and legal personhood. The study of commercial law can be divided into four basic categories, individuals, natural persons, <coughs> objects of commerce, legal instruments and administrative and legal procedures. Business relations between individuals and business entities require significant legal documentation, including a typical or non-standard business contract. A central feature of all business transactions is the legal entity used by organisations worldwide to conduct business. In order for many businesses to carry out routine activities, they must have many of the same legal rights and responsibilities as natural persons. In a word, these entities require legal personhood, which leads us to the question of legitimation. The most widely used legal instruments are non-standardised business contracts. In essence, this is the delineation of contracting parties as entities with well-defined rights and obligations. This authority depends in turn on the legitimacy of the personhood of the contracting parties, which is often a point of dispute in business relations. Regardless of whether one accepts the use of terms legal entity and legal personhood, they often give rise to immeasurable and diverse conflicts domestically, regionally and at a global level. This has led to efforts to improve the rules of the International Chamber of Commerce and improve legal models that provide guidance to dive diverse nations. Dive 
or to speak, we have reviewed the works of different authors in concluding with the person, uh, personal insights of Olivia Arcelia Quintana. Carla Santana. Introduction. Legal scholars have divided the study of commercial law into four broad areas. Persons. Yeah, I've done that. Oh no, it's just, it's not a repeat. Into four persons, both natural persons and juridical, business entities, legal instruments that facilitate relations between the first two groups and D, administrative and legal procedure. In business, a significant array of legal instruments are used to validate, clarify and enforce transactions. They often include, among others, contracts that are atypical or non-standard. That is what I've just read. Person. Merchants may be legally classified as natural persons or juridical persons. The first group refers to individuals innately capable of assuming obligations and exercising rights. The second group refers to entities with legal personhood, often referred to as collective entities. Juridical persons or corporations, the term entity will often be used to refer to this second group. General concept etymology. The word person has multiple meanings. It's etymologically derived from personaire, a term related to histrionolas, lava, which means mask. Histrionolis, histrionolis, lava, which means mask. In this sense, the person is understood as the mask covering the face of an actor who recites verses during a scene in a play. The mask's purpose was to make the actor's voice vibrant and loud. Later, people came to use the term person to refer to the masked actor himself. In view of the above, it is quite understandable to associate a person as a natural being of the human species. I refer you back to the first quadrant or the middle quadrant of video one that precedes this video and the first part of this document that I read out um, a week or so ago. It is on this channel. You watch, rewind the beginning of this video or look on SPLS Pro video channel. You will find that. You should have already seen it if you're watching this one. And if you haven't, stop everything, go back and watch it, then come back and enjoy this one. Doctrine. Doctors, doctrine. What What is this? If you don't know, Historically, legal scholars have had difficulty precisely defining person. Below are examples of several definitions that have served as benchmarks for this legal entity. Carnaluti conceives a person in a triangular sense. He views the subject as the vertex where personal interest, economic element and substantive law legal element meet vis-a-vis -a, -vis a legal relationship. For Carnaluti, the person is the meeting point of these two elements, i.e. the crux reached by both. Moreover, he says that the legal entity includes more than man in his natural sense, that is, as an individual. It also includes those instances in which there is a collective interest uniting several men to act as in concert, as if they were one. Indeed, the, legal, the collective legal entity is created when the economic element and the legal element of the legal relationship coincide, thereby creating the foundation of the collective interest. To Carnaluti, legal entities include both natural persons, individuals, and collective entities. Both types share a point of convergence between economic and legal elements, although the latter is notable for consisting of multiple individuals, not just one united by a common interest. Bonnicase has defined the right of legal personhood as a set of rules and institutions that apply to the person, either as individuated, differentiated from others, and in its actions, for Bonnicase, legal personhood can, divided, can be divided into three parts. The existence and individuation of persons, that is, like it. The elements that distinguish an individual and determine his or her legal status. Differentiating elements include name, physiological features and place of domicile. 
some weight there. That's what I want. You will now hear my queen getting her uh, scran ready. She's come in from the day's play and will be exceptionally hungry, as is everybody. You will hear the guinea pig terrorising the family when she realises someone's in the kitchen. She lets us all know about it. <laughs> like that one, maybe that one. Let's go for a bit of black. Black background's good. The legal capacity of individuals, natural persons and their differences, on the one hand, this is based on the legal capacity of natural persons defined by the organisation's bylaws. <laughs> on the other hand, it includes the study of entities meant to make up for the shortcomings of natural persons. The existence, individuation and capacity of legal entities or juridical persons, which is the focus of this paper. Savigny is the strongest proponent of the traditional theory, better known as the fiction theory. Savigny sees the legal entity as an artificially created being that is capable of owning property but lacks free will. He regarded corporations as exclusive creations of law, having no existence apart from their individual members who form the corporate group and whose acts are attributed to the corporate entity. So when I say you've written to a person and that person is a soulless entity, a soulless corporate entity, our persons are, which is where the free man, common law, practical lawful descent, Magna Carta have focused on, um, you know, dead and dead person. And in fact, it is better terminology to use such as what I have given you just now. This led Savigny to the conclusion that a person is the entity capable of exercising obligations and rights because legal entities are a legal fiction and lack free will. They cannot be a subject of law. According to this line of thought, an ordinary human being is a person only when he or she has the free will to acquire rights and obligations and becomes a subject of law. A royal subject, subjects of the Queen, subject, subject access request. Hans Kelsen mentions that based on the fiction theory, a subject of law is that which is the object of a legal obligation or subjective right. The latter term is understood as the legal authority to demand the performance of an obligation, though it is not a thing but rather a form of being. For Kelson, natural persons and juridical persons are defined by rights and obligations, which when taken together are metaphorically expressed through the concept of person. Kelson denied any difference between the legal personhood of companies and that of natural persons. <laughs> natural persons i just hate saying that personhood in the legal sense is only a technical personification of a complex of norms rights and duties garcia mayonez defines a person as any entity capable of having powers and duties he mentions that legal entities are divided into natural persons and juridical persons the first group refers to individuals with rights and obligations while the second focuses on associations endowed with legal personhood such as unions or corporations mayonez prefers to differentiate between the two groups by using the terms individual legal entity and collective legal entity in a moral or ethical sense, a person is endowed with free will and reason that enables it to freely plan goals and find means of bringing them about. Maynez says that from an ethical perspective and based on the ideas of German philosopher Nikolai Hartmann, a person is capable of making moral judgments, although he makes clear that these judgments do not necessarily de 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 determine its conduct as such free will is a critical element of legal personhood. It's really paining me to bring this to you, but I've got to look, show you the research, what I've found. And obviously God created man, man created government, and it was government that created persons. These falsehoods of the personhood in the neighborhood of which I uh, really don't want to carry on with. But I will go and skip through these um, bits here. There's a lot of them. All right, I'm going to skip page 68 onwards and we're going to go through to the next relevant part 
I think we could look at finishing this video even though my queen has come home and um, Princess Yanka will be home in 30 minutes. Um, you can get hold of this document and look at this um, as you see fit. All right. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. Elements of jurisprudence. The corporation as a subject of law has also been focus of attention within the criterion that federal courts, excuse me, have issued. In, what, in one such criterion, the federal circuit courts discuss the nature and legal personhood of the juridical person, stating that a corporation is a fictional entity whose legal personhood is expressed and exercised through its representatives, which is understandable given that its very nature requires the involvement of natural persons, managers or administrators to present it and work on its behalf given that fictional entities cannot labour on their own behalf. Now that's something to hold on to. I hope you enjoyed that. All right, four, five, six, seven on page 80 of 90. In analysing these criteria, other elements of legal entities include the powers and subjective rights of the legal entity, the free will of the entity or social will, obligations of the entity, and then for some reason, it depends where I've got this from, at what point, but based on Mexican jurisprudence, the concept of juridical person includes the following elements. Existence of a legally recognized entity, free will of that entity set forth in its articles of incorporation and manifest through its agents, rights and obligations accruing to the business entity, Legal identity independent from that of its shareholders and subject to law in its own rights. We have um, Santos mentioning previously hombre, man, and nombre meaning name. As we go through Mexican, I can't think where that uh, reference has come from. I haven't got a citation in this document. I will continue on, 81 of 90. We're approaching the end of this epic document and part two of, um, of this proofreading. A legal entity is a legal construct created by the combination of five elements, an entity or subject of law, free will, subjective rights, obligations, and legal personhood. As a practical matter, the juridical person distinguishes itself through the recognition of its legal personhood, which allows it to inquire, acquire certain rights and be subject to certain obligations. As such, the actions of a legal entity demonstrate its will. In addition to identifying the holder of rights and obligations, legal personhood helps ensure that actions realised by the business entity have legal effects. The factual situation that gives an identity to the juridical person and the relevant legal regime's recognition of it are what gives the juridical person its legal personhood, which is a factor that distinguishes it from other subjects that also possess free will and are capable of exercising rights and fulfilling obligations. Having set forth arguments in support of this thesis, we can state that the focus of this study does not form part of the physical person. Therefore, it can be applied to juridical persons which are fictional entities in the real world, but very real ones in the world of law. Indeed, legal entities have five elements. They must have the ability to possess rights. Second, they must have free will pursuant to that set forth in its articles of, in of incorporation. The third and fourth elements which are related to its subjective rights and obligations exist within a corporation because it has will. However, there are cases in which express authority is necessary to create rights and obligations. Due to the conduct and circumstances that establish authority without the volitional aspect, based on the ideas above, we can confirm that legal personhood is a creation of law whose role is to identify the subjects of certain... Oh, it's gone. <laughs> Excuse me. Egi as they say in Magyar. 
subjects of certain rights and obligations and grant legitimacy to actions realised pursuant to those rights and obligations. The fifth element of legal personhood on the other hand encompasses several elements. One of these is a factual situation identifying and that occurs when it adopts one of the types of business associations provided for in the general law of business corporations. In addition upon recognising these types of business associations we find another aspect of legal personhood, namely the law's recognition of the legal entity's separate identity. In sum, we can conclude that a legal entity can be defined as follows. A juridical person is an abstract subject created under law and having free will, rights, obligations and legal personhood which give it a separate identity within legal relationships and make it a generator of economic, financial and commercial obligations. Personhood is the individualization of the legal entity through a factual situation in which it finds itself overseen by a legal rule that allows one to distinguish it from other entities in the business law relationship within the area of law in which the matter unfolds. She is also a commercial law professor in the postgraduate studies division at the Faculty of Law and Financial Law Professor in the Accounting and Administration Faculty at UNAM, lecturer, regular, regular researcher by competitive examination in commercial law at the Instituto di Investigaciones Judiciaries UNAM, member of the National Research System at the National Council of Science and Technology, Mexico. The term collective legal entity is used by Francisco Carneluti and has been the subject of studies in various areas of law See Francisco Carlinuti, General Theory of Law, 153, Private Law Publisher, 1955. Interjection with persons and types of persons and natural person, legal person, ecclesiastical deed, poll, a true person, corporate person, juridical person, public person, too many p -p 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 persons to, uh, to, to um, go through, to purport. How madness was that? I'm going to let that just ride out there and see what's on the end. You can see the document late, mid, page 80 out of 90. We move on to core rules of the game. There's a document that I've written that I want you to consider. I'm going to put the link into here. Maxims, axioms and precepts. Um, is also another document that will be linked into this document. These are previous documents that I've authored and written and presented that um, I want to uh, give you links on to have a look at. The Proclamation of Sovereignty Part 1 and Part 2 that um, we have written and given away for free via our <laughs> literature library, our resource vault on splspro.com. We've put them in our public Facebook group and we've put them in both our telegram groups. There is a video called Wake Up England 2017 Must See Crown Court Rules Template that I'd like you to consider that's on my other channel that's currently been sanctioned for speaking truth regarding vaccine damage bill and um, and um, yellow pass scheme for uh, Covid and etc. And a quick recap of the places where you may want to come to find us I will screen share and show you again um, where I am to be found and our admins and our family public and private domains. All right. Let's do this and then we're finished. Happy days. Thank you for your viewership. Thank you for joining. Thank you for your comments. Um, if you're not with me live now, which not many of you are, because not a lot of my scribes from Indiglo have um, come across to this backup channel. And I presume on this Wednesday, um, 20 to 4, that people are out and about. Share screen. Let's go to web browser. All right. So you go to our homepage, splspro.com. And you would click the button, become a supporter there. And I would very much like, if you aren't already, for you to consider joining us and becoming a supporter. 
and um, working through go away this you would find on our home page a little bit about us the preface for who and what we are and what we do there's a couple of videos for you to consider watching there there's the uh, introduction the landing splash page as I like to call it and um, yeah have a little watch of both of those videos that second one has bad language from um, the late great George Carling our, our uh, news stories are here Most recent one, Chris Nolt Morris, council tax is unlawful, no obligation challenge. <laughs> Love to Chrissy Morris and all, all his family. And um, back to the top of the page, if you click the blue F, this is what happens. It takes you to splspro.com Facebook domain, where Kevin is um, living virtually. Kelvinius Maximus the first. All right, you may want to. Uh, Think about frequenting there. If you don't want to initially come straight to our homepage, or you can't, uh, you don't have the 12 credits, promises, pounds, $17 a year to uh, to give to us. Um, if you do join, and you go to uh, our activity page, you will see both of our public and private Telegram chat links there okay private telegram group link you click that and it will take you to the private SPLs exclusively for our website okay and it will ask you to open in telegram desktop join group etc and then the public open chirp click that you do that I can open in telegram desktop and then it will show you the public telegram chirp there where we are okay then IndieGlow you would type Indiglo in the YouTube search, press enter. You would look for the uh, old beard hid silver surfer king doing the fist bump Indiglo. And you would click on that and then you find my primary channel and all of the videos and playlists within uh, myself, Kevin, the admins of SPLS Pro. Okay, you are. So, um, and we are on SPLS PRO on um, which you already are here tube for those that are watching on my indie glow that haven't followed across and that are missing out on um, these live streams when the uh, indie is facing the account there is under sanctions and facing uh, being a very naughty boy then uh, you can find me here and that's where you will uh, type and what you're looking for the lion and um, the document cover from our proclamation of sovereignty um, part 5 silver edition I believe alrighty then so we shall say goodbye hasta la vista arriva derci farewell oh it didn't share wait there oh, I've got to do that all again oh my days if that's the only technical issue I get today then that's not bad alright so we're here SPLS bro <laughs> oh my days Indie Glow is there. Silver King, fist bump, check that. Bosch channel. I'll go to the home page. Luckily we're fast. Splash landing page, please read that. Become a supporter button. Click that and decide if it's for you. Watch both of those videos, have a little laugh. Number two, bad language. Some of our recent uh, posts regarding what we've uh, considered as an independent alternative media news um, source, journalists, um, historians, journalists, researchers, as what we all are in our unofficial capacity. All right. And then um, some of our merchandise available for donations, some of our documents and publications and bundles and I will add to that and update that with the documents that you've seen and heard of um, recently and then um, back to the top if you join us here's where our telegrams is you would just click that button there and then on the activity feed it gives you the private telegram group link public open chirp link simple as a click 
and then open in Telegram desktop or if you're on a mobile it'll open in the mobile app okay yeah and then um, to the Facebook it's as simple as the blue F you click that and that will take you to public splspro.com Facebook trust I uh, thank you very much and um, we will be uh, meeting again soon okay and um, I hope you enjoyed that I hope it was a laugh I hope it was enlightening I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did how long have I been live I don't know but it feels like a long time two hours ago four and a half hours to read 90 odd pages thereabouts fantastic bum shanker let's stop sharing all right then I'm gonna say Arrivederci, hasta mañana, until tomorrow. Auf Wiedersehen, cheerio, much love. Oh, my bones, bosh. I bow to the spirit within you.